This morning on The Dish, Chef Dave Barron. He's earned an array of awards in his career, including a prestigious James Beard Award and the coveted Michelin star. But the most eye-catching testament to his talent is still found on every plate. Dishes as remarkable for their visual beauty as for their creativity and depth of flavor. Our Jamie Wax got a look and a taste for himself. In the heart of downtown Santa Monica, there's a jewel of a bistro. Ajoli, which translates as not pretty, is clearly ironically named. And where the setting and the cuisine capture a bit of both California and France. The restaurant is the creation and showplace of Chef Dave Barron, who gave us an impressive demo of his approach to pleasing the eyes and the taste buds. One of the greatest smells in all the food world. Caramelized fennel is paired with a luxurious lobster velouté, piled with root vegetables, edible flowers, and fresh local herbs, before a fillet of halibut is rested on top. Wow, perfectly cooked halibut on top of everything else. Mm. Absolutely delicious, the work of a master, but Baron didn't expect to be a chef at all. Basically, I went to college to try to play hockey. At the time, your father was teaching hotel and restaurant management at Syracuse. Correct. And he took you on a life-changing trip. But there was a, a summer when I was in college, and he used to go to the restaurant show in Chicago every year. And um, one year, I didn't have anything to do that summer. He's like, hey, you want to come to the show with me? And I thought, sure, I'll go. And I was like 20, I had nothing better to do. Um, and then after that, we ate at a few restaurants in Chicago, and I was like, this is really cool, I'm into this. Not feeling he could afford culinary school, he went straight to work at a restaurant in Michigan. Then he set his sights back to where his love for food began. I had three months of experience. I don't know what I was doing. You know, I was applying everywhere in Chicago, thinking I can work anywhere. I worked at this one restaurant. And the Chicago Magazine has their, like, top 20 list every year back then, and I just looked at the list and was like, I'm going to apply to all of these. He ended up working at some of the Windy City's most influential restaurants, including MK, True, and at the globally revered Alinea with Chef Grant Ackett's. What's the most important thing you learned from Grant Ackett's? You can always do more than you think you can. You basically, you're setting your own limits. I mean, I watched a guy like dying of cancer and still coming to the kitchen, you know, so you kind of sit back and say, well, I guess if he can do that, then I can come in and be a little tired and still work. Ackett survived his fight with cancer, and the two went on to partner in another restaurant, Next. The Next was presented to me with the opportunity to figure out what my style of food was, because there was no style of food there. It was tasting menu, and it had to change three times a year. Seeking a change of environment, Barron headed out west to Los Angeles. But at first, the chef out of Chicago felt like a fish out of water. The first few visits, I was just like, why am I here? This city's terrible. And then the more I started spending time here, the more I realized you get back what you invest out of L.A. And you can have a great dining city, but it's only supported with great diners. And as I started looking around here, I started seeing people really being engaged in dining. And that's a really magical point in a city. Barron became a part of that magical point with his beloved L.A. pop-up dialogue, which led him to the opportunity to open his dream bistro just five months before the world of dining fell apart. You open this just long enough for everyone to fall in love with it, for it to receive accolades and I'm sure a tremendous waiting list and everything sure. else. And then the pandemic hits. It was terrible. Um, I've never seen a group of people come together the way they did to try to keep this place open. From kitchen to front of the house, like, we were trying everything. Everyone was throwing out ideas. But I think through all of that, we came out a better restaurant. That better restaurant now turns out some of the most innovative takes on French cuisine around, like their beet salad. It's roasted beets and carrots. There's a goat cheese spuma under there, foam. That is not at all a, a typical beet salad. Gnocchi with bay scallops, English peas, pea tendrils, and pea blossoms. This looks like a California farmer's market in a bowl, right? Yeah. Right. Mmm. That is a really special dish. And something Pajoli is best known for, their duck dishes. First up, duck roulette. Duck slowly roasted and preserved in its own drippings, then transformed into a decadent, spreadable appetizer. The sweetness and smokiness as well with the crunch of the bread is just yeah. really nice. The jam kind of saves it. Next is the duck press. So the duck press, whole roast duck for two, you finish with a cherry vinaigrette. It's a whole lot of parts of the duck. I mean, the idea is we're not wasting things. Let's 
the point of the dish. That is such a depth of flavor. And a one-of-a-kind cheesecake with a burnt exterior that has special meaning to the chef and his staff. It's one of those magical things where it like shouldn't make sense. It's burnt on the outside. It's almost its own sauce in the way it's creamy in the middle. It is. During the pandemic, we had to sell, I believe it was like 250 a month in order to keep the entire staff on health insurance. I mean, this is literally, this dessert yeah. represents keeping your staff supported. Yeah. I can see how this kept your, your staff yeah. in health insurance. So anyway, we could, uh, we sold enough of them apparently. Are you out? And for Dave Barron, the goal isn't to keep expanding, but to expand possibilities for new culinary talents. I don't want an array of restaurants with my name on the door. Uh, it's not realistic. I'm not at 30 restaurants. I think the dream for us is that, you know, we've, we're developing the infrastructure here. I would love to harvest talent. What's this? Bass? That's the challenge to restaurants. Cooks are cooks. You know, you didn't start cooking to work on spreadsheets. And that's why a lot of good restaurants fail. It's not because the food's not good, it's because they don't know how to run the business. And so if we can provide people the opportunity to do that and grow the brand that way, that would be the best way to do it. That che would be the Cheers future. to letting cooks be cooks. Oh, yes. And to your food. For CBS Saturday Morning, Jamie Wax, Santa Monica. So no food from Jamie, but we have a, we drink. Have a drink. Voix Rouge, seeing red. It is beet juice, gin, vermouth, St. Germain, and lemon. It is on our diet. Cheers. 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 That's Cheers. Not really Cheers. on mine, but no, it's all right. It's it matches, all right. Your, matches your dresses, too. Mm. Nice. You know, Ooh. we've had two French Ooh. restaurants, two chefs. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> but completely different menus, yeah. completely different well, styles. Go. It's really amazing. That's the wide-ranging style you get here at Saturday morning. I, I love when he says... The food, it's, it's, most restaurants don't succeed. It's not because the food isn't good. It's because they don't know how to run the business. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, we talk to so many chefs all the time, and it is the one thing, especially when a chef opens, when you don't have somebody who has that business side and maybe you haven't done it, it is a business. It's not just about cooking and getting people there, and that's an important part. 